Shasta Kano Martin. I'm from the Lummi Nation. Uh, my traditional name is the something. My um, Indian name is Tiamia. I um, come from the Montana. I'm a Cinnaboyne Sioux. I'm from Okanagan First Nation Sioux. People may be judging it before experiencing it, so there's a lot of misconceptions about what peacemaking circles is, and people might think that. Um, it's not a Lummi practice. It's a very, very high wall that we climb when we introduce something that our people look at, even though the basis is on a native format. Part of our teaching is repetition. Repeat, 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 and you repeat it enough bits and pieces get stuck in people's minds to where they will come forward and start taking a look at it with open minds rather than saying, oh no, this is not Nooksack. Oh no, this is not Lummy. Oh no, this is not, you know. We're not here to replace anything. This medicine is not here to replace anything that's already here. This medicine is to add to what you have to help you. And we're just, we're not forcing this on you. We're, we're offering this. This is laid out for you to use this, you know, and we're just, we're just sharing it. It's another people's way that we're bringing here, um, but it's because it matches our values. It matches that we want to be able to talk things out between each other. It matches that we want to value each other and we want to be able to live together in peace and continue to do that until we're no longer in this world. Inside the peacemakers, we get down to the heart, we get down to the things that really, really, you know, affect us in our lives. When it first was introduced to me, I didn't know what it was. And the first time I sat in circle, it really changed my perspective on things. The most fundamental part, it seems to me, of a peacemaking circle is, you know, there isn't someone high up and there isn't someone in the corner or at this bench or that, it's us sitting in a circle. And one of the things we learned in circle was um, sometimes people have needs and sometimes that need is as simple as needing to be heard. I think especially with youth, I think this process would be huge because I think youth, they don't feel like they have a voice. And so I think this process can be huge advantage for juveniles and talking to parents, grandparents, sisters, brothers, whoever's in the family unit and be able to explain to them how they feel and where they want to go and what their needs are. Because if, if the individuals that we're dealing with and we're working with don't feel empowered, there's no way they're going to succeed. Most of my training has been more legally um, based, so it was very interesting to hear the stories and to see what people shared and how they were impacted by sitting in the circle and, and listening to those stories and um, the songs and the prayers that were being offered. We as a team need to be working together. We need to trust each other. And we need to know, in a sense, where each of us are. Not that that's good or bad or judgmental, but so that we can move forward in a more fluid way. It's really about shifting the culture and the community that it is okay to heal it is okay to address these problems uh, within our family and community with each other and have those hard conversations that need to happen and um, that's a total culture shift from just having a successful program or project the leadership needs to embrace the peacekeeping uh, values and, and efforts uh, the council we have 11 council members it's important for them to support and understand what this is all about. And we can use that in different fashions with the tribe. We can use it in our court system, our education system, our health system, natural resources, pretty much anything we do. When people are in conflict, we can offer this service, say, 
we'll work with you. We'll help you, your family and that family, sit together and talk about the issues. And if we can, we'll find a resolution to those issues and we'll all work on trying to help make it workable for you and your families and support you in that. This process can be for any sort of situation. It doesn't necessarily just have to be like, you know, a, a dreaded process, like they're gonna make me cry and stuff. We actually laugh and have a really good time a lot of times too. And you can apply it in any situation with your family or in a community or in a program um, or just for yourself. It's an alternative method to help heal our people. My Indian name is Telequat. My Indian name is Sokwin. Um, I share that name with my late father. Kiskisa Blue is my traditional name. I'm here from Lummi. And Lummi Nation is my tribe. The vision for Circles in Lummi is really um, people being able to use this practice to show respect and honor to one another and come together in a good way, um, not only to resolve conflicts, but also to celebrate and um, connect with one another. I ask God to intervene and to our community people to look for that healing because our community is dysfunctional. I, I drank and I used for about 25, 30 years of my life. Uh, after the age of 11, 12, I struggle with a little bit of, you know, was it being a lot of shame and guilt that I carried for a long time, but the peacemaking circles that I've gone to, you know, um, has helped me deplete most of the, the shame that I felt because of my history of, of where I was and the way I carried myself before, you know. You can see the, the work that it's done, um, or you can feel the work that's been done already um, by being able to just come together and face face the um, the feelings that we deal with on a on a daily basis. So, um, a lot of positive, new positive energy that that we need to get back to. I think that shows the community, you know, the reciprocity, the values that, you know, we want natives in, you know, that come to this area to know they're already being practiced. Um, so I think that's quite a gift um, to have those values um, already implemented and now we're just practicing them. I don't think we've ever had, in my experience, anything negative come from this process. I think every time I've been involved with it, it's been positive. I think people have taken a lot away from it. And I think I've been seeing our judicial system use it more frequently in the orders uh, from, the, from the court as part of their judgment. It's just another tool that we can utilize and have available for our people because now we have many methods of helping our community become well. I was <clears throat> apprehensive at first and then when I sat down with my elders. Um, for the first time, I was able to share my personal story and they were able to pray with me first, teach me about putting our sacred objects in the middle and what they represent, and that we had a talking piece that we went around the circle with to respect and honor each other's stories and that they would be there for me every step of the way of my personal life and my court affiliated life as well. So I would share personal moments with them and failures and success and, and they would be in court to speak for their witness of what they're doing with me and the transformation and as a result I'm overwhelmed with gratitude and to be here. That's all. That's all I pray for is the healing for our community, to help our younger children. I pray that they will look open their hearts and their minds 
and try and make it to one of the peacemaking circles to see how it is. Because we can't force them to go, but they have to want to go. They have to want to learn. They have to want to understand what it's all about. But they have to make it to that one. They have to make that step. This training, like I said before, has, has broken a cage that's been around me for a long time. <sighs> There's a release that's been, that's happened. Um, that has never happened before. And I cannot begin to say how wonderful that is and to be a part of it. Um, the energy that's in that circle right now is just amazing. And I, I feel like I'm home. When's the next one? <laughs> <laughs> I think that once people take part in it, they start to shift their idea about what this could mean for their themselves, their family, and their community. You know, we all need somebody. And that's what I've learned from, from this peacemaking circle, is that I'm not perfect, and neither are you, neither are they. But we're here for each other. And I've learned that through this, that there is someone there. That, they, that I do have colleagues in this peacemaking circle. We all need each other, and we're here to help each other. What I learned was that I'm able just to be myself. It really helped me discover that, you know, I am worth something. I come from the Arrow Lakes Nation, from the Stala Nation, uh, in Chilliwack, BC. The Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians in Cherokee, North Carolina. I'm a citizen of the Lummi Nation, a descendant of the Duwamish people. I'm from the Lummi Nation. I'm from the Lummi Nation. From the uh, Nooksack Nation. The Nez Perce Tribe of Idaho. So the peacemaking circle that is being considered with the Nez Perce Tribe is re related to the juvenile, a juvenile healing to wellness court. So I think that our youth will, tr will benefit tremendously from this type of a circle. Um, from having peacemakers who can speak with them and, and guide them to in areas that they need help with. And I think that um, there's a lot that's missing with our youth that they can get from this peacemaking circle. A lot of cultural um, and support from the elders and from the peacemakers who may be in, who may be in the circle. Well, it's a useful process. Um, it's useful teachings. Um, it's never a wasted moment or time or experience. You've always gained something out of it. We facilitate justice circles, healing circles, but with the peacemaking circle, you know, um, it's not only for our clients, but it's for the community. My supervisor has been through a three-day training in Cherokee, um, as is the, uh, the judge that suggested that I go. Um, and I've already texted them like three or four times um, saying, y'all better get ready because I'm coming back and I have a fire um, because this needs to happen. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a struggle, but it's also going to be a wonderful journey because this is important. Um, the Eastern Band of Cherokees needs that healing. I hope to take this back to the peacemaking circle on our reservation. And one of the things that I personally think needs to be instituted right away is to have our own peacemaking circle at our monthly meeting. Once more of our community gets involved or gets engaged with a peacemaking circle and, um, you know, we will have a healthier community. This is something that the that our communities need, that the Lummi Nation needs, that the Stala Nation needs. This is something that we, that we all truly need. There was elders there that are saying, you know, we need this. We need it on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis. This needs to be ongoing. You know, our communities, you know, they, they need healing. I just enjoyed enjoyed the peacemaking circle and I hope to attend again and help me grow and help me help my community. It's been an amazing experience and I wish others would have the opportunity to, to be a part of this. There should be more funding and 
this should be going farther than Lummi Nation because it, it changes lives. When we have our roles and responsibilities to each other, you know, it's, it's my responsibility you know, to, to show my nieces and nephews how to conduct themselves. You know, that's my relationship to them and to our elders and my grandparents. You know, that's another relationship. And um, what he was talking about is our relationships to each other. And when we have hutchning with each other, that we were able to live in harmony. And today I want to share a song. It's our national anthem. My highly respected people, we come from the survivors of the Great Flood. Come together, my Indian people, and stand strong. I am a survivor of the Great Flood.